Mark Nathan, Judo I'm here with the Wolves reporter. It is Mr. Liam Keane. Liam, we're talking about Brentford again, again. It's FA Cup third round replay at Molyneux tomorrow night. Gary Neal has just come in for his pre-match press conference and in good spirits, nicely tanned. <laughs> nicely yes, tanned, yes. didn't get the invite, did we? A little, no, little, little I, cheeky week in Abu Dhabi. It would have been nice, wouldn't it? Well, um, I'd have taken it. I, th I think Gary would have been happy to have us there. But Delighted, Maybe yeah. a little bit out of the budget at this stage, but you, you never know, maybe at some point. We'll go into negotiations. Look, um, obviously, big game. Could have done without the replay, I guess, but at the same time, how are things looking in terms of team? Yeah, so hopefully a little bit of good news. Um, the first and, and maybe the biggest, no disrespect to the other players, is that Mario Lamino is back today. He didn't go to Abu Dhabi, but back today with mm -hmm. the squad. Great back news. Back in training. Now he's been off for a few weeks. They're going to need to take a look at him physically and, and how he's... And, and, and mentally as well, yeah, because of course, of, yeah. you know, considering what's happened to him and his family. But um, Gary's hopeful that he'll be in the squad tomorrow. My suspicion um, is that he'll be on the bench if he is involved, and it probably will be a starting two of Joe Hodge and Tommy Doyle. Mm -hmm. So a big opportunity for, for both of them, but particularly Hodge, of course, who's not played uh, an awful lot recently. Some people will say, oh, Joe Hodge, really? Well, what about A, B, C and D? So what's happening with the midfield at this moment in time? <laughs> a lot's happening, I'm afraid. So obviously, lamina has been away, and as, I, yeah, as I've just said, I'd, I'd be surprised if he starts, yeah, to be honest. I agree, I agree. Uh, Brighton, hopefully, will be the, the, the game where he comes sure. back in. Dal Gomez is suspended. Um, Wolves didn't appeal. It's a three-match ban. Um, so there's a lot of incentives to win this game mm. because of the Albion game, but also because if Wolves do win, um, it means he'll only miss one Premier League game, which will yep. be that Brighton game. So, so, uh, yeah, a lot of incentives for Wolves. But Jal Gomez is out. It looks like uh, Hodge will come in alongside Doyle. So, yeah, Lamina being back in and around the mix is a massive positive uh, and plus for Wolves, uh, the club, and for him, of course, as well. Um, Dawson, and uh, Dawson, Hugo Bueno and Bentley all missed the uh, trip to Brentford in the FA Cup draw, and, um, and they should all be back around it. Um, it sounds like Dawson might be 50-50 with a start, mm -hmm. but Hugo Bueno probably more likely to start off the... Um, of those three, uh, based on what Gary said, um, but all three back in and around, it's probably less of a youthful bench than we than we saw at Brentford. Pedro Neto as well played and I thought had an excellent cameo at Brentford. Do we expect to see him from the start tomorrow? I'm a little bit torn on this one. Oh, I'm not um, torn at all. I, Let's see if we both agree. I sort of <sighs> no, my, you, my no, no, no. I'm paying you. I've got a million pounds. You've got to say one way or the other for to gamble that million pound. Well, Otherwise, you get nothing. Well, the problem is I've already sent you um, my my picture and uh, and words for our predicted uh, lineup. Okay, uh, I'm not, I'm not... and I've predicted he isn't in the lineup, so okay. I'm going to have to stick with that. Okay, I think um, I think he's starting. I can see a lot of reasons. I think he's lot, getting sixty minutes. I can see a lot of reasons why he starts and gets sixty minutes. And to be honest, it probably will happen. The reason I haven't gone with it is that you've got one of these two things has to happen for Neto to start. Mm -hmm. Cunha either has to move from the left into striker, which they've been um, trying to avoid because yes. they wanted to play on that left side. S understand that. And the other one is you drop Sarabia. I don't think either of those are particularly likely. The one that is likely is probably Cunha moving over into striker and Neto, Sarabia and Cunha start together. Um, I think you can do all three. Otherwise, you play... You play four at the back? No, that's not going to happen. Oh, okay. Otherwise, you play Bella Gala as a false nine. Like yeah. They started at Brentford mm -hmm. before Jal Gomez got sent off, obviously. So, yeah... I can see a lot of reasons and I'm leaning towards that but I've decided to be a little bit different okay. and say I'm going to I'm going to put him on the bench. Okay, put him on the bench. Um, I think, look, everybody wants to talk about West Brom and in that press conference every journalist wants to talk about West Brom. Gary Neal, as you can understand and look, I think Gary Neal is very good in pre-match press conferences and he words it very well. Of course, it's an incentive for them and he didn't say it wasn't an incentive and I think that he will use that in his pre-match team talk. However, they've got to look at Brentford because if they are under par against Brentford, they will lose this game. They've got to play and they've got to show signs. Hopefully 11 versus 11 this time. Hopefully not talking about exterior factors. But Brentford have got a lot of issues as well. Wolves are starting to get players back. Wolves should, with a, probably a stronger starting lineup than we saw at Brentford, win this game. But you cannot look past it. I agree with all that, that they should win this game. The problem is... A Brentford side even weakened with a few injury issues that, that, that they've obviously got. Uh, Ivan Tony's not back for them until after this game as well. They've still got a good side. Yeah. And they've got a good manager. And they're a Premier League team. Um, and that's what Gary Neal kept coming back to. This is a, a Premier League team we've got to get past first before we go and play West Brom. Who, of course, are not a Premier League team. So, <laughs> it's all... It's all uh, well, that was close. Um, yeah, I, I think Gary Nilo approached it in a very intelligent way because you can't deny the excitement that is amongst the fan base and you've got to approach it, especially when the questions are, are framed around mm. it. But equally, you have to make sure the players are aware. You've got to get past a team that is a decent side first. So, um, 
you can't take your eye off that objective equally it's quite exciting isn't it a potential black country derby so i'll be i'll be gutted if wolves don't win this one well. when the um when the draw came out for the fourth round what what did you immediately do uh, well i immediately tweeted it first okay good <laughs> so like that, that was the first like thing that. i did um i was watching it I, I saw a load of people tweeting leading up to the draw saying come on please ball number nine away ball number nine away it came at west brom away i thought no chance. i was watching with my family all in the room yeah. like, no chance could not believe, I was absolutely buzzing. So I tweeted it and that was about it, that's what I did really. But I'm really excited. Wolves have to win this game. To yeah. Have to win this game. It's a massive opportunity. The first thing that I did when I saw the draw for the next round is look when the fifth round draw is. That's not all, that's poor, that. That, no, that, is a, that is a dangerous thing to say. <laughs> it's not, it's not a guarantee. Because let's be honest. Win tomorrow night in the fifth round. Let's be honest, Wolves have not got a good record. No, they haven't, but they'll, 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 they'll put some ghosts to bed. Like some ghosts to bed. I'm so. Oh, 100%. Uh, they're winning there. Um, right, let's go on to, I guess, the other main talking point. Um, I say it's a talking point. We've been pretty level on this for months and months. Wolves have, whether you believe it or whether you don't, whether you think there's ulterior motives at play, whether you don't believe us, it's fine. Um, Gary Neal's confirmed it there as well. There were, I guess there was some, some ridiculous transfer rumour rubbish page that um, got everybody panicking again. And this is FFP, Nottingham Forest and Everton look seem to be in a little bit more trouble. Um, Wolves, as Gary Neal says, and they've kept to this, they're, they're okay. Yeah, they've um, got constraints in January, of course. Yeah. They have, but at the same time, they've known this, and that has not changed. Wolves are okay. Yeah, as you mentioned, it's, the reports seem to be that um, Forrest and Everton are expecting to find out today mm -hmm. that they have breached. Now, the, the reason why it's phrased as expecting because they're expecting to hear from the Premier League, but they know what their accounts sure, are. They course, know what they've submitted course. to the yeah. Premier League, um, and of course, it's been mm -hmm. leaked out there. So. Um, Probably not a massive surprise based on what we've, what we've heard of those two clubs. Um, what would have been a surprise would have been that Wolves would have breached it because of all the work they've done mm -hmm. to avoid that. Mm -hmm. um, Wolves know what their figures were. Um, it's whether the Premier League decides that there's anything um, quote unquote dodgy to investigate, but I think that's very unlikely. And Wolves are in incredibly confident that they'll uh, they'll they'll pass through the the uh, the rules and regulations um, fairly comfortably. And, and fairly comfortably is a, an interesting way to phrase it because it is close because of the fact that you know we knew, how, they, were how much, we knew they were close anyway yeah. how much they spent and all the ha you know how much they sold to, to get themselves to this level it was always going to be a cautious january but they've done a lot of work to get them to this point without anything going wrong so wolves are very confident that there's there, there's no breaches mm. that, are, that are going to be enforced and that wolves will not be contacted by the premier league with that and, and gary neil reiterated that in the in the press conference and as you said a cautious january and i think gary neil was keen to yeah. to deliver that message we knew that would be the case um Look, there's a few people, and you can understand it, with the likes of Fabio Silva already going on loan, Sasha Kalajic already going out on loan, and Gary Neal saying, look, do not expect anything like what we saw in January. We knew that. But at the same time, when you've let certain people go, when you've already got a small squad, there are question marks as to, well, are we killing ourselves? Do we, should, should we have kept one of those players? Because if we're not going to bring players in to a certain extent, when we haven't, you know, with two strikers going in, I think some people might have thought, well, they, well, they would have had one in by now. Can you understand that frustration or a little bit of nerves there? I assume that they will bring in one or two, but it might be maybe, you know, in a one or two or three weeks' time, depending on what dominoes fall. I guess people thought that they would have a ready-made person ready to go, and that's not the case, is no, it? No, and it, it links back to a little bit of the Matt Hobbs statement from recently as well, via Wolves' channels, that January is a difficult month to do business and Domino's forward the phrase you just used there is a, is, a, is a good way of describing it because you've got to wait for other clubs to, to make deals that trickles down the leagues and players become available and um, Wolves want to bring a player in that's going to impact the first 11 or at least be close to impacting the first 11 fairly quickly and to get someone in from that, that a player like that from a club mm. that maybe doesn't want to lose that player and that, you know there's a lot of things that have got to happen for a deal to be made. Um, Fabio going on loan was no surprise, no. it was going to happen straight away. Sasha was though, I think the Sasha, time of it. It was the timing, yeah, completely, completely right. The timing of it was the, the issue because mm. Wolves were very, pretty adamant they weren't going to send him on loan until they got a replacement in. Gary said that three weeks ago, exactly. yeah, very adamant. It then became very clear that they weren't going to get a replacement quickly mm -hmm. and for various footballing and human reasons with um, Sasha's uh, wife heavily pregnant with their first child, they want to go back there and, and settle before um, she gives birth and before, uh, you know, they, well, before all that kicks off and, and play, get back to playing football again. So, Wolves decided to make the decision to allow that to happen, partly for those reasons, but also because they've only got one Premier League game this mm. month, uh, which is Brighton away on the 22nd. Uh, the United game got moved to the February the 1st, which is transfer deadline day, so they've got a little bit more wiggle room in that regard as well. Um, 
as we described it at the time, and as I'll describe it again now, a little bit of a risk. I think Gary Neal probably would have wanted someone in before allowing him to go, I'm sure. Um, but he, he's fairly confident they'll bring someone in. Um, it's not going to be an exciting, jam-packed January mm. full of signings like sure. it was this time last year. But he's pretty confident they'll bring someone in and be able to do something. And what he did hint to, which we've said, and, and it wouldn't be no surprise, he hinted at loans. I think that's the kind of market Wolves are certainly in, unless they could get something that was fairly cheap. Um, well, cheap in terms of football, <laughs> in terms of football money. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting how it heats up in the next ten days to two weeks yeah. or so. Um, and I guess a bonus for Wolves is that Nathan Fraser is back in the squad as well. Yeah, it, definitely a, a bonus. Um, he's, he's been frustrated with a couple of little niggles here and there, and not getting opportunities. He obviously was there on New Year's Day watching Shrewsbury play Fleetwood. Um, Shrewsbury are very interested in taking him on loan, as are a lot of other clubs. And Wolves, understandably, I think, were reluctant to let that happen until they know a bit more where they're going. Um, and Gary Null also, as well, said that Fraser would have got chances um, up until his injury happened, uh, before his injury happened, rather. So um, he'd have played probably a, mm. a fair bit, particularly with Fabio being out of the picture um, up until uh, January. So. Yeah, one to watch. It's one that's going to drag on a bit into January. Do you think Fraser, who, who will probably be in the squad tomorrow night, I assume from the bench, Joe Hodge, who we're expecting to start tomorrow night, but things could change very quickly for him at the end of the window where he could get loaned out. But at the moment, thank God he's still here because um, otherwise they would be in trouble, I think. So the fact that he's going to start, the fact he's going to have a look at him, but I expect that maybe later on it would be it would maybe one or both of those players looking to, to make a move. And also, just to finish and maybe add on to that before you get, you address those two players, you're some Mosquera, Gary Neal, is having a look at him. Could he be one who, who might be able to, to move as well? Yeah, all three of them are very much question marks at the moment. They're the three that, from the first team picture, that could go on loan. Uh, it depends on incomings, it depends on firm interest with clubs. We know there's a lot of clubs interested in, uh, in Nathan Fraser. We know there's a lot of clubs interested in Yosa Mosquera, a lot of championship clubs. Joe Hodge has been a little bit quieter in terms of concrete interest. There's definitely clubs that will be sniffing around but in terms of con concrete uh, uh, you know approaches to Wolves has been a little bit quieter I think in an ideal world you get all three of them out for game time but you only do that if the Wolves' squad is in a position sure. where they where they can survive without them mm -hmm. um, and, and right got, now they're probably not and they honest. can't just think February they've got to think March April exactly. May exactly. You know, there's a lot of games coming there's there a lot is. of games to play you know you've got players like Tawana Torreira coming through I know he's a, he's a different position to those three but he's still a, a young player coming through he's you know, clearly very talented got his debut mm -hmm. those kind of players will ease the burden a little bit for Gary O'Neill but I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident that all three of those will drag on till pretty late in the window because Wolves have got to see again where the domino is for using that phrase again because it, it's not just incoming players, it's also outgoing players for Wolves. Let's finish with some predictions then. It is Wolves against it's Brentford tomorrow night. Liam King, what's the score? Oh, I tell you what. Did we do a, we didn't do a potty with the... No, we didn't. That's, we why, that's why we've done an extended video for the peeps. So... Although the potty is coming back Wednesday. 2-0 Wolves. Oh, 2-0 Wolves. Yeah, I'll go for it. Fairly comfortable. Wolves 1. Brentford 1. Oh, God. Does it, is it extra time? Extra time penalties, yeah. Extra time. Wolves get it in extra time. 2-1 Wolves. Extra time. Long night for us. I feel a bit ill Long thinking night about that. <laughs> Could you imagine the nerves just desperate to get through to that Black Country Derby? <laughs> oh God, and the fifth round. Uh, we'll, we'll see Brentford for all the post-match and pre-match reaction. Make sure you log on to expressastar.com.